Thank you for tuning in to Exeter TV. The meeting will be starting shortly. While we wait, let's learn more about Exeter TV. Exeter TV is the town's public and government access channels, available on Comcast channels 98 and 22. Channel 98 is your channel. If you have an idea for a program, want to host your own talk show, or submit a film, we're here to get your content on television. On Channel 22, we bring you live and replay coverage of government meetings and other town updates. A third channel, Blue Hawk Media, is operated by SAU 16 and can be found on Channel 13 with all your school sports, events, and meetings. You can watch Exeter TV online at exeternh.tv, Apple TV, and on Roku. Find us on social media for extra content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified about live streams and new content. Tune in to our platforms every other Friday to watch the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report with recaps of recent events, updates from town departments, and messages from nonprofits in your area. If you head to our website, exeternh.tv, we invite you to sign up to our newsletter to receive monthly updates about new content, upcoming meetings, and more. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch Exeter TV and hope that you tune in to our other content as well. Grayson Shepard here uh, on behalf of the uh, Exeter Historic District Commission. Um, do we want to introduce ourselves for the record? Yes, I'm Julie Gilman, the select board rep to the HDC. I'm Pam Jettum. Uh, Gwen English, planning board rep. All right, so uh, first order of business, or I want to ask, what, which one are you, what are you here for? I'm here for uh, the Smith Building, Water Street. Okay, well, do you want to go Mr. out of Chair, order? I'd like to read Oh, for heaven's like sakes, don't up. make him <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on the... Do I have a motion to go? Uh, Let us move the Smith Building up to the top. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.
Oh, this one. I looked at these things a while ago, but it's been so long. And I was looking, I think our last meeting was in October. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Chairman, Board. Good evening. Uh, my name is Shane Forsley. Uh, I'm with Hampshire Development Corporation on behalf of uh, the owners of 173 to 179 Water Street, uh, commonly known as the Smith Building. Um, I'll try and navigate with the uh, with the clicker, but I may be running back and forth here. Yeah. Um, Let's take the mic with you if you go, so we can hear you. It comes on, it, it okay. detaches from there, so that they can hear you on TV. Alrighty. Um, so just a little history on the project. Uh, we were before you a, about a year ago, um, proposing to add windows to the three blank um, sides of the building. Um, one being the uh, the riverside and, and the two sides to the existing building. Um, most recently, we were in front of the planning board in December, um, proposed and approved um, the conversion of the existing first floor to a smaller commercial space and uh, seven rental apartments. Um, so with that being said, um, we had a slight redesign and uh, what we are proposing here today is uh, some modifications to the previously approved uh, penetrations um, or windows on the east, west, and north elevations. I'll see if I can jump down here. Oh, there you go. So on this page here, um, that is the previously approved application. Um, what you'll see is those were what I will refer to as commercial style units. Um, they were fixed units with uh, awnings at the base. Um, and when I jump ahead here, let me see. What we've proposed to, proposed to use is uh, double hung units now um, for a more residential application. Um, they'd still be aluminum clad, mm -hmm. um, still have the traditional brick mold casing, um, but that's what we've proposed. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, what you'll notice um, on three sides of the building, uh, particularly on the rear, um, we've incorporated some recessed decks. Um, which read as a double hung. Um, our intention was to maintain that double hung look, although the patio doors would actually be in relief. And that would be on the north elevation. And on the east and west elevations, um, you'll notice that there are three total Juliet balconies. Um, again, we wanna utilize uh, patio doors um, that, uh, read as double hung units. In addition to these, um, we've incorporated residential entry and exit points, um, which we would we'd need um, for uh, life safety and egress purposes. Um, you'll notice those on the east elevation being a new opening. Um, the west elevation is essentially an expansion of an existing opening. And uh, you'll notice on the north, um, as previously approved, we uh, intend to enclose the garage just visually, not actually a full uh, garage enclosure, but um, it'll shroud the uh, covered parking area. I think, I think <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I guess we can, kind of go from there do we have any questions I'll open it up if anybody has any questions just on the materials that we've been provided um, I don't have any questions I have comments in that the uh, change to double hungs uh, <laughs> since they're keeping the same size opening um, you know it's not 
exactly what you'd see for the period building, but it is the right proportion. Uh, and the, the garage enclosure um, fits better than what's there now, actually. Um, and let's see. And what are your changes to the, <coughs> excuse me, to the front of the building? There are none from our previous? I could zoom in there. Yeah. Okay. So what you'll notice here in this uh, proposed addition, um, originally uh, the modifications we had proposed and were approved extended all the way from the limits of that, uh, that dashed mark uh, where it says revised entry all the way to the right hand corner. Um, what we intend to do is maintain the egress door on that far right hand side. Um, and I can actually jump back to the old plan too, so you can just see um, essentially what we're looking to do is keep one uh, entry point to that commercial space as opposed mm -hmm. to two and uh, have two larger storefront bays that match what's, uh, what's now existing. I'll jump up to that. And so what you see here was from our previous application about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, uh, what exists there today is currently two sets of double doors. Um, one set of double doors enters the former George and Phillips space, and the other set of double doors enters into uh, a vestibule or a corridor in there that gets access up to the upstairs. And so um, instead of having those multiple entry points, what we'd uh, like to do is utilize one entry point to that commercial space on the right-hand side and uh, have a matching storefront um, flanking it on the left and right. And I can jump back to that. Yeah. So the opening on the far right is is no longer a door, or it is a door. The la the very most right hand. It is a door it is that a exists door. today. Okay. But it, okay. And if um, it's probably best on sheet. Let's see. A one point one. And so at the very top of the top right corner there, um, those stairs exist today. And uh, those are egress stairs from the um, offices on the second floor. And those would continue to exist. Um, that first store front bay as you move downward on the page would remain. Um, the modifications that we're proposing would just be an extension of that storefront bay inboard of the uh, covered area and then have two storefront windows flanking a single door entering into the uh, commercial space. Okay. <clears throat> So what is the, I'm sorry if I'm kind of jumping around, I'm a little confused here, but the new entry point mm -hmm. does presently does not have uh, door access on, I guess, Water Street. Is that correct? Right now what exists today <laughs> is two pairs of double doors. Actually, I'm going to jump back to... Uh, current photo of the front of the building here. Yeah. Thanks for letting me manhandle <laughs> your application. Oh, hey. It was a long day today. There we go. 
so that's what exists here here today and i think this is probably the best representation mm -hmm. of uh of what we're looking at. So on the far right, you can see that's the egress door that's to remain. Um, to the left where the American flag is, that storefront bay remains the same. Um, where it returns into the building under cover, that would be extended um, to a, what I'm gonna call a full storefront as opposed to a half storefront right now. Um, both of those red double doors under 173 and 175 go away and it would become a single door entering into the commercial space with a uh, matching storefront on the left and right. And those who would enter um, the offices up above would enter on a door that's recessed on the left. Okay. okay. All right, that, that's much clearer. Yeah. <laughs> What um, what are the doors uh, going to look like on the at least in the new double door? So we'd propose to match what's existing. So essentially, the double leaf would become a single leaf, and the uh, panel details that you see across the um, storefronts as you go down the down the slope would uh, continue to be consistent so it would be a continuous bottom panel although the grade drops off it'll all it'll all match and would the egress door on the right obviously be consistent with uh, with the new door correct Well, I have to say, given what it was when it was Woolworths <laughs> and, and what it's become today and what you're moving on to um, actually reflects more of the Woolworths stage um, with having more display than door. Mm -hmm. And that's a... I mean, kind of typical what we see down the street anyway mm -hmm. in the other buildings. I've got an another question. Unless anybody's got anything on the doors, the, the storefront, I have a question about the balconies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, um, what kind of material, can you just kind of give us some detail on the balconies? Sure. Because I don't really see anything in the packet on that. Yeah. Unless and, I missed it. Uh, so the intention would for it to be, you know, a, uh, a wrought iron or similar, some sort of nice architectural uh, metal um, rail on the balconies, um, if that's what you're asking for, the Juliet yeah. balcony specifically. And I think... Um, given your blessing, we could come back with, uh, you know, a proposed detail for those sort of things, understanding the, uh, the application we're looking for. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be helpful to have some information on the balcony details. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. personally. Yeah, I think part of it is that some of us can imagine what it is because we have experience with mm -hmm. the Juliet uh, balconies. Mm -hmm. um, but for those of us who don't, it would be good to see a sample or at least a drawing or a cut sheet sure. of what it's going to be. Do we feel it's important to have some a better um, um, representation of the garage doors? Or do you, what, what are those exactly? Am I, let's see. Well, what was um, our previous room? <laughs> on the west side, same. Which doors are you talking about? In the um, very rear? On the west? The west okay. side. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so the okay. intention there would, for them to be open grill. Open um, grill. So they'd be open to the air. Um, essentially, we don't want to enclose that area, rather just shelter it from the elements. Okay. Mm -hmm. And those are those are aspects that we had previously approved on the last application. Yeah, we had, yeah. okay. Correct. Yeah. How quickly I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's been a little while since we were here last. <laughs> yeah, really the only difference on the north side is adding the, uh, the Juliet balconies and changing the type of window. 
And if the balcony really is just uh, black wrought iron, I, I have to Yeah, but I don't necessarily need to see mm. uh, representation mm. to come back. I mean, if it's just wrought iron, if, mm. I mean, if that's what it is. I'm yeah, familiarity yep. with kind of what wrought iron fencing is. Mm -hmm. Just kind of. Yeah, maybe if um, you can send us a cut sheet that we sure. can put in with the application mm -hmm. so that we have a record of, of what you're proposing so when you build it, <laughs> we are not surprised. Yep. That would be good. I, th I think we could... Yeah, we can do that. Do that. We've seen a lot of Juliet back, uh, balconies along the back side of Water Street, so mm -hmm. we know what they're going to look like. We'll draw some inspiration from those. <laughs> <laughs> On the west side, um, to the right of the garage... There are two double doors, a single door. Mm -hmm. And then there's an area that um, was kind of darkened in, and now it's open. Mm -hmm. Looks the, a window, I guess. Is that? Yeah. What, so uh, what is that? I don't remember what it was. I'll work my way from uh, the left to the right. Yeah. So the pair of double doors right now is an existing single door. It's probably 42 inches wide, so a little bit wider than a traditional door. Yeah. Um, and that would be um, an entry point to uh, the basement area, which would uh, lead lead a civilian or pedestrian up to um, a two-stop elevator, essentially, a Lula lift. Okay. Um, and then the second opening um, is just represented as closed. Um, what we would probably do is either use a, a panel or infill it with, with, uh, with masonry, and that, that kind of squat-looking uh, opening is a former um, loading door. Yeah. So they used to take deliveries there, and there was a, a conveying system um, that would bring the goods up to the, the second floor there. And same goes for that. So, so now you're opening it up so that you have the light? Uh, no, those, those will remain closed as they exist today. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's just how the existing condition was represented. And, like, yeah. if you move your way up the slope, you can see the um, the low windows kind of just above grade. Those are also shown as white, but those have just been bricked in, essentially. Oh, those are bricked mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's why you have the uh, the arch headers, because there used to be openings there, yep. but they're mm -hmm. not okay. anymore. Mm -hmm. People have asked me about that. Why are those <laughs> there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um so those are the you have an elevator in there. The um, forgive me for not remembering. <laughs> yeah, they did. Stop uh, elevator. Uh, where was it, that? Is uh, there a um, a head uh, height for the thing anymore? <laughs> no. So there is a modern elevator um, in the front third of the building, um, and that would take somebody from the basement at the front mm -hmm. or uh, walk in at grade here and make their way up to the second floor. So that services the commercial tenants only. Um, what we are proposing and a requirement by code is to have a um, elevator in the rear for accessibility, and so it would just be a Lula lift. It would be something similar to like you, you would oh, have, what here. We have here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to be sure we didn't have some uh, structure on yes. the roof that mm -hmm. isn't presently there, and mm -hmm. eh, it would have a little impact on the the. Uh, mm -hmm. kind of, although that aspect of the building is not original, mm -hmm. um, it would change it. But, but if you can do that without penetrating the roof, mm -hmm. more power to you. <laughs> Any more comments or questions? No, I don't think the changes. Uh, I actually like the change to the uh, front elevation. I mm -hmm. think that it's m m m m give, giving more display space for uh, commercial areas like we have along the street there, I think is a, a appropriate use of that space. And then... Yeah, it's all retail in the front, right? Correct. Yeah. So you get about 80 feet back, and that's where the demising wall will be for the uh, residential apartments. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess do I have a 
motion to, I guess, accept as complete? Um, I will make a motion to accept the application as complete, provided we get a cut sheet of the Juliet balcony materials. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Do we have any public Is Anybody on Zoom? That's a question I for... <laughs> I think so. I don't think they knew we were meeting tonight. It was on the... It had been updated on the website, but I guess if there's no public comment, is there anything else that we need to discuss before we can take up a vote? I, I don't think so. I think the changes are actually fairly minor to what we approved yeah. before. Um, and like I said, they're, they're actually coming back to some of what was is currently there um, and some of which uh, matches or is close to what was there in the historical photos. Um, you know, keeping the sign band is perfect. Um, the double hung windows don't aren't changing the openings at all. It's just mm -hmm. a different type of window. Uh, so I I don't have any real questions about what's changed. You know, we what we previously approved to what's changed. Go, going back to the um, the west side um, where you have the the balcony, there are the three windows on the right as you're looking at the image um, that are now, unless I'm misinterpreting it, they're now taller. There are three windows now instead of mm -hmm. two, and they're now taller. Is that, am I reading that correctly? You are, and... The um, windows, yeah. So those three tall windows there, um, the reason why they, those exist in that fashion is um, floor level at, at, in that space is actually significantly lower than the sills of those windows. And so oh. standing on the floor there, the, actually the sill is somewhere up here. And so one of those windows, um, probably the furthest one towards the street exists. Yeah. And it yeah. used to be an elevated sales platform or an office. And so standing in the office, you could look out the window, but actually the sill is six feet or more off the ground. So what we propose is to drop that sill that it, so that it's more practical for the interior space. Okay. So you're actually keeping the original openings, you know, where the arched uh, uh, openings have been closed in. You're filling that space back up or opening that space back up. Correct. Yeah. Right. Which I think is uh, kind of appropriate for <laughs> having openings there that have been closed to open them back up. All right, so no other comments or questions? Yeah. Motion to approve. Move to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Easy -peasy. Get us the cut sheet and you're all, you're all set. Will do. Appreciate it. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thanks. Well, we can't really do much right. because I don't show up. The second mm. order of business, if I had my minutes, was the public comment on the Verizon Tower at 24 Front Street. Mm. Uh, it says that uh, tax parcel 72 Um any thoughts, comments? I know we. this has been kind of on the docket for a couple months now. I, I think one of the reasons that we wanted to see it was because we didn't really get the information on the uh, front street side of the, the antenna, and uh, they're changing the size, and I thought it seemed rather substantial. And I know they're going to keep the... Um, Good night. Drive carefully. Nice. Really, I. 
we're going to keep the, the painting pattern that we request, we requested the first time through with the brick and matching the brick part and mm -hmm. the, and the white where the uh, fascias are. But the description of the antenna on the front sounded like they would be much bigger than what the photograph is portraying and what is there currently. And that's why I wanted to see the, the application. What is the um, size difference, does it say? Well, if you look on page two, I think of their application, um, they have the existing is 12 inches wide, but the proposed is 19 inches wide. Which is quite a, yeah. quite a jump. And the same for the height is 52 now and is uh, proposed to be 59. The depth is smaller, which is good. <laughs> uh, and I don't know what the other proposed ones so are. Those are in the back or the front. See, I have the same problem that I had way back at the beginning. I, I, I just cannot visualize what they're doing. And I would like a artist projection or whatever they call them. And see, I know that back in, two, it says, you know, back in 2017, they, con they consulted with the State Historic Preservation Office. They did. Um, which had no problem with what they did, no adverse effects. I just... Um, I just can't tell from yeah. you know seven inches to twelve inches if how close they are together anymore. Will it become a bulky part of the facade that shows up more than it does right now? Mm -hmm. so that looks bulky, well, but I'm not that. sure. But I'm not sure. Right. I mean, which one are you looking at? I'm looking at this thing. Okay, RF one. It's the uh, the rear of the building. But on the right side, on the Court Street side, um, that's where they're proposed to change the size again. And I, I don't know what the projection is going to be, and I don't know if it changes how deep it is or how well, long it is. this little thing is sticking out. That's one of the antenna. Uh, I know. But uh, how big is it? Well, yeah. It's one of these, but I don't know I which one. Well, I, that's not really helping me. I'm sorry. No, it's not. Uh, one, uh, four of them are shorter, yeah. but I don't know which four. So what is our role? Yeah. We uh, Our role is to ensure that what they s uh, mount on the building doesn't change the profile so drastically that you think the use was something else. Um, we don't want it to be so um, uh, projected and uh, massive that it is inappropriate to the proportions of the building. Um, typically when something like this happens, uh, an application like this happens, uh, they have to get approval from the HDC that there's no adverse effect to the building by what they're adding to it. Like the Congregational Church Tower, which also has an antenna hidden in it. But that's you wouldn't in, know that. You, well, right, yeah. that's inside, and they didn't yeah. have to come see us because that's inside. Mm -hmm. These are projecting from the elevation of the building. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, we're not really sure which ones are larger than the uh, existing ones. So if we have questions, can we ask that they come and yeah. present us with more information? I'm yeah, that's what I expected. Yeah. I kind of thought someone would show up tonight. I mean, yeah. they have been waiting impatiently for <laughs> I would have thought they'd be here. Because yeah. even, even getting, I believe, even getting the state historic preservation officer to sign off on this, mm -hmm. which they have to do as a telecommunications company, mm -hmm. um, they would request our opinion mm -hmm. because we're local and we see it every day and, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it feels like our hands are... Kind of no kind one of here, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that we still have questions, and 
and I don't honestly can't tell you the, the, that they're referred to differently than they are in the list of the sizes. The, the um, structures on the roof and in that back uh, block that we approved previously when those first installations happened, those I don't believe are changing from what I understand in their description. Uh, not, so that's fine. But really, I don't, I don't know what the effect is. Yeah. Of the new ones. Mm -hmm. Could we ask them to, you know, someone has to come and describe this to us, or better yet, show us. Oh, yeah, a drawing that shows drawing the difference shows between them. Like one I mean, I'm the sorry, I, I just what it is. This yeah. does, what doesn't help me. I mean, I, it's very complete. Uh, someone worked hard on it, but we don't have a bef existing and after no. kind of drawing. That would be helpful. <laughs> So I guess, should we make a motion to table this until we have someone come back with additional questions or, or I guess to answer our questions or? Yeah, we can move to table it and ask uh, the staff to get, you know, contact them for more information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I think we're scheduled for sometime at the end of March. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A few weeks. So yeah. if they want to come back, they can come back. Yeah. Move to table. 16. Oops, sorry. 16th, I think, is what it is. But they're pretty on the time. I can even correct you. Oh, great. <laughs> it is the 16th, yes. Okay. Vacation. Vacation. <laughs> um, so that. Did you make a motion yeah. to table? I move that we table this application until uh, we get more information from these people. And I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, Can you tell Barbara what we're what we were looking for? Yeah, we we'll put that on. Yeah. We'll put that on the application. Yeah. Yep. And so the last thing is the approval of minutes from October. But did we ever get confirmation that after? What is yeah. it, 60 days? Oh, yeah, this is, this is so grandfathered that it's... I guess so, yeah. <laughs> but I must say, I like the new uh, AARP printing <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, one thing I would like to bring up under um, other business is the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Arts Committee and just about everybody in town would like to see improvements there, uh, you know, including um, HVAC and seating and uh, bathrooms, et cetera. Um, and the Arts Committee has an opportunity to go for a grant to do some changes. Mm -hmm. um, I've been uh, advocating for a town hall master plan committee or town hall master plan anyway. Um, so I'm looking to one of you if you want to sit on it. We haven't uh, formalized it yet, so there's no you know, definite time and date that we'll meet every two weeks or month or whatever. Um, but if anybody's interested, because um, the Arts Committee does have a proposal for uh, a building survey, a historic building survey to show us what's currently what still exists is is an important feature to the his, history of the building and and I will also say the Department of Labor has uh, given us some changes that we need to make which will be very difficult to make look uh, like they've been there a while you, know, you don't have to go backwards and make everything look like the period it came from but we don't want to destroy anything either unless we all agree that this is not uh, historically significant to the building. And I'll give you an example. The seating gallery in the main hall mm -hmm. was added in the 30s. Uh, so it's not original to the building, but now adds character and, and as 
everybody that has lived since then. It's a it's a feature of the building that we appreciate and um, I think personally I think belongs there but you know maybe in our master planning we might change our minds because of the things that we want to add like uh, uh, newer lighting and a better sound system and does that get in the way um, right now uh, the D Department of Labor is looking at how the space is used for employees and right now that ga that gallery is the seating gallery is used for the controls of mm -hmm. the lighting and the sound system that's currently there. So having an employee go up there, um, the the knee wall or the short wall that is the front of it is too low for today's safety rules. Uh, so we have to consider <laughs> what we have to consider the whole layout, and that's why we want to do the historical building survey. Um, that'll show um, the company that's proposed it has um, uh, experience with this kind of thing and they can show us the structure. I don't think we have actual drawings of the building, although we should from the, eight, really? from the 1850s. Mm -hmm. eh, maybe not. I don't think the <laughs> rules were the same back then that you had to keep everything, but, um, but they would do that, you know, as built drawings. And then... Well, we do have... Of uh, write-ups in the newsletter where they were saying about the building, yeah. especially when Lincoln spoke. Yes. So. Yeah, and that's an, and and that gets me to grant application. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I had I had submitted a grant application for just the building survey, um, just to look at the pieces parts. I just wanted to do that much, <laughs> and and because of the ex the seemingly extensive changes that we are looking at, not definitely proposing yet, but are looking at, um, they thought it would be a better fit for us to go to an L-SHIP grant, but I think that's premature because we don't know what we want to have, you know, the full extent of what we want to work we want to, to do. Um, and there is a grant available to do some of that work, um, and I don't know I don't know what the deadlines are for it, or if it's a repeating thing, or if it's a once-in-a-lifetime mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got to get this master planning town hall thing uh, together. There, there are problems with uh, um, disability access, and um, you know the elevator's fine, but the art gallery upstairs is ra raised a level, and you have to step down into the egress in the other room that's there. Um, you know, the are the are the stairs when you first enter actually the original stairs to the second floor? I because we've added rooms or chopped up thing. The, the upstairs you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I honestly don't know whether they are. Hmm. I I don't either. And and uh, taking a tour of upstairs uh, around. Uh, past the art gallery and the rooms that are up in the front of the building mm -hmm. and then even further upstairs towards the attic there are mm -hmm. places that look like they were uh, reaction reactionary like we need a space there's one let's build something over there you know so you know those might solve some of our problems and where we right now you know EXTV is using a room they could use more space um, is that the the highest best use of the space? You know, we don't know that yet. But where else would we put them? I don't know that yet either. So, so that's the long story of we need a master plan, <laughs> <laughs> and and really yeah. would like to have. Um, although we only really deal with the exterior, mm -hmm. we don't know what extent that might change. You know, adding air conditioning systems to it. And, you know, is there going to be stuff? the air handling units outside the building and where's the best placement for those and make it function for the building. Um, that we would want to look at. Um, I think the rest of the rest wouldn't really affect anything we do inside isn't really going to affect the outside. So that's my goal wow, anyway. Good project. Done. Yeah. So the the H D C part of it is not um, not a huge part of the master planning, but I would like to have somebody for at least part of the the exercise. 
Well, I don't want to take on anything right now. As you know, I'm in the middle of a move. I'm also doing taxes, and um, so they made me a high mucky muck of the church, so I seem to get, <laughs> get called for everything that happens down there. So, But, but I do, I mean, I, I'm also interested in it for the UFO Festival. Yes. So, so don't take away any more seating. We need more seating. No, in fact, one of the first things that we can do without any in, in, mm -hmm. you know, involvement with, uh, mm -hmm. with us or almost anybody is to change, have actual chairs <laughs> <laughs> instead of the, uh, the fold-up uh, seating have that we have. I told you that uh, Kiwanis has actually made out like a bandit with the UFO Festival, and we would give you... Some uh, give us a check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing. So, so this is the idea. Okay, most people agree we need new chairs. Um, the arts committee, select board, mm -hmm. other pla other people would like to mm -hmm. see those sooner rather than later. And that's something that we can do without making changes to the mm -hmm. building because mm -hmm. those are all movable. Um, but we have to buy them first, and then we can pay for them. And one of the ways that we've talked about is selling the folding benches that we have right now, which you can find on eBay for surprisingly uh, substantial amount of money. Really? I can't <laughs> imagine anyone. Those things are so uncomfortable. No, I mean, if you want people... cutting the value I, no, for all of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> they're incredibly comfortable. <laughs> I, I have sat in them for, you know, 60 years. <laughs> but, that, but that would probably be one of our outlets to, uh, to afford the chairs, you know. Um, and I can see it being very successful. I, I know I want some, but I get, I get you know, I'll, I'll pay my hundreds of dollars or whatever it's going to mm. be. There are three seaters and four seaters yeah. and two seaters, so mm -hmm. I don't know where I'd use it, but I want some. Yeah, <laughs> boy. <coughs> Put your name in. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so, so that's well. just to fill you in on mm -hmm. the status. Um, we really do want to move forward with the, the uh, master planning of it ASAP. Um, I'm, I'm gathering, I'm informing the boards that I sit on that, mm -hmm. you know, this is what we want to do. And um, I just need someone, I can't, I wish I could say we're going to meet on the third Monday of every month mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. and I, no. I can't. Well, just, yeah, let me know, just let me know when the scheduling is and I should, mm -hmm. I can try my darndest to, to be there. As in a theory, theory I'm supposed to be moving back to my old apartment yeah. in, in yeah. the summer. Well, We're basically okay, well, together. We make one there. decent yeah. commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're interested. But, uh, well, I'm interested in many reasons, not just for the uh, history, but also yeah. for UFOs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that, you know, we don't want to make a lot of changes in there because mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. time that, that the built thing has been living and how the living changes have happened. Um, I'll tell you one of the things that the Department of Labor said was that the um, stage is too high. Stage is too high? The stage is too high, and I just, Why? we got a flat floor. <laughs> how can you make it lower and no. let people see everything? Yeah, stage is so this is one of the things that we have to yeah. work on as a, you know, a committee with. I don't uh, know if you read that murder in the town hall where they, Took the body and actually pr got it up to the to the dome and pushed it out onto the street. Now, how they? Why? I I don't know. But <laughs> now, was, last time I was up there, there was just a ladder. Now, how did you get up there carrying a body? There are some steps that are much <laughs> like a, a this submarine where you have to step, yeah. step up and yeah. dip your head at the same yeah. time. I don't know. And you did that carrying a body? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, well. So, see? History, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but, yeah, just uh, to keep me, just let me know what's going on. Um, and let me, I'm trying to think about what's been happening at the state. We had... We uh, had a marijuana bill. That was what was on channel. Oh, it's one of several. <laughs> Different degrees of, of uh, legalization. Oh, whatever uh, happened with the... Um, the 
They had a vote on attendance for 91A. That one, um, the way it was going to change was that we could, right now we can have somebody be remote, Mm -hmm. but it's limited to one person, I believe. I think it's just a physical quorum has to be present or something. Right now, the proposal was to allow for um, uh, remote uh, participation for a quorum would need to be in the physical place that the agenda is noticed for, um, or a third, whichever is less. So depending on the size of your, yeah. of your committee, you know, some more than one can be remote. Uh, it has to be accessible to the public. And when we were doing the, this by Zoom, you know, everybody could come in. And we had you know, greater participation. That argument hasn't seemed to make it. Doesn't help. But, but one of the reasons is because not every town has the capability that we do. And, and I'll tell you, um, it has taken us a long time to build up from just having computers, never mind having video. Uh, so it's a reasonable argument that smaller towns cannot do this. So the, I, I don't, right now the bill was every town shall do this, not every oh. town may do this. Mm. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so right now it's uh, well, not, did they do not going forward. Gotcha. Hmm. I'm trying to make everybody up to s- as transparent as possible. Everybody, you know. Okay. So, yeah. Well, that's any <laughs> other business. Um, I, there was there was another bill. Oh, another bill. You know, we have uh, we're participants in uh, or uh, adopted the RSA 79E, which is a tax incentive, gives a tax uh, uh, deferment to. Uh, businesses or people that um, renovate a building in a historic district. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in the time that they're making the changes, they keep the same tax level that they were paying before the improvements are made. And then once they're done with the improvements, then they get revalued to what the new value is because you've improved it. Mm -hmm. Um, There was a change of the definition of qualifying structure. And qualifying structures right now are buildings in a historic district, buildings that are over 50 years old. We had to define the area that we were going to use the 79E tax uh, um, incentive. So we designated downtown and Lincoln Street. And maybe a little of Portsmouth Ave, I don't remember the map. Um, so we would be involved with the changes on, on uh, the downtown. We wouldn't be involved in the cha- any changes to Lincoln Street because that's not a historic district um, or Portsmouth Ave. So, our so the change was to to make, <laughs> and I think I know why. But um, right now it just says historic structures and it identifies them as buildings that are 50 years or older, or have are in a historic district, they have some significant his, uh, value by. An activity like Lincoln coming to to speak here, um, and they want to change it to just buildings and parcels of land. And there wasn't really an explanation for why that change. Everything was is either a building or a parcel. Of land. Well, think about so it. What do you think was the? Well, I I, uh, I actually asked the state historic preservation officer, and he had a problem with changing it because they're not quite sure they like it at all. <laughs> so you didn't want to change it before, you know, we have a little more consultation about it. Um, the If you think about it, the empty lot that we have downtown, mm-hmm. Missing Tooth, mm-hmm. that would be more uh, appropriate for this program um, because in, what happens is the select board gets to decide how many years do you defer the tax increment? And there are five years for the improvements, four years for adding housing, an extra four years for improving in a historic district. And then this one would change that to add five more years uh, for developing an empty parcel. So uh, mm. in the select board's discretion, they could give up to 19 years <laughs> of tax deferment wow. or, you know, or less, depending on what yeah. the argument is. And, and um, 
I know that that property in particular did look for uh, the deferments and my argument against adding the extra four years for being in a historic district was that there is nothing there mm -hmm. and there hasn't been for over 30 years or more so hmm. interesting hmm. yeah so okay. but that didn't pass so it's just yeah. stay in the way it is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> surprise surprise interesting. all right oh. well Anything else from anyone? No. All right. I hope you noticed the horse trough out in front of the building that was the original. Sure, every horse in town is <laughs> going to be so happy. <laughs> to have it back. And, well, you know, when the fellow comes in for the Independence Festival, he'll be able to take his horse over there and eat some flowers because that's what's going in. <laughs> there won't be any water. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> I've been watching that. It was on Brentwood Road. I've been watching that for years and praying that it somehow got back here. Yeah, yeah I'm so glad. Yeah, it was donated that's from the right family that had it. Yeah, so which is it was, great. It was nice. Yeah. Very cool. That's it. All right. Motion oh. to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All right. Very good. Thank you, folks. Just sliding away here. Thank you for tuning in to Exeter TV. Exeter TV is the town's public and government access channels, available on Comcast channels 98 and 22. Channel 98 is your channel. If you have an idea for a program, want to host your own talk show, or submit a film, we're here to get your content on television. On Channel 22, we bring you live and replay coverage of government meetings and other town updates. A third channel, Blue Hawk Media, is operated by SAU 16 and can be found on Channel 13 with all your school sports, events, and meetings. You can watch Exeter TV online at ExeterNH.TV, Apple TV, and on Roku. Find us on social media for extra content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified about live streams and new content. Tune in to our platforms every other Friday to watch the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report with recaps of recent events, updates from town departments, and messages from nonprofits in your area. If you head to our website, exeternh.tv, we invite you to sign up to our newsletter to receive monthly updates about new content, upcoming meetings, and more. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch Exeter TV and hope that you tune in to our other content as well.